What are some social hindrances women face that men don't? You have to decide in a split second if you're being too friendly, chatty, etc. to not be interpreted as interested by a man you have no interest in, especially at work, because most of the time you can't leave. Also not to accept any drink at a bar from someone you don't know. There are awful people that may drug a drink. Walking at night can be much riskier sadly. It happens to me in my career a lot. I'm a union electrician. I had a high school janitor at a job site I was working at the other day. Explain to me that what I did was not correct and maybe you should call your co-workers to do it. For you, I called my foreman with the janitor present. He came. And he said everything I did was fine and I could go home. End of the day. And the janitor still was in disbelief. My male neighbor used to complain about our newly built covered deck flooding water into his garden. It has its own gutters which go directly into a drain. Is a good minimum 3 meters from any fence and the plans had been reviewed by the local council prior to being built. We never noticed excess water. Although our gardens were side by side. He used to knock on our front door to complain. Make snarky remarks over the fence to my mom who usually was at home during the daytime. She told him if he was unhappy to pursue it through the local council. My dad answered the door one day instead of my mom. Politely told the neighbor the same things my mom had said and to go through the council if he was. Still unhappy. Never saw him again. This was less than 10 years ago. Medical providers, regardless of their own gender, don't take our issues seriously. Especially pain. It's a well-studied phenomenon and means we have to see several providers to get a diagnosis or treatment. If we even manage to get that, we're less likely to be given pain medication and more likely to have doctors miss that we are having a heart attack. Gaming women get trolled a lot more than men. When spending time in groups that are predominantly male, I find that what I say is often ignored. Sometimes, a man hears what I say, and repeats it in his own words. Then other men agree with him but they didn't agree with me when I said it. I don't mind too much the guys who do the repeating so long as they very quickly say that it was my idea, not theirs. If they attribute the idea to me then they've done me a favor really. One which shouldn't need to be done. But still it's better than being ignored altogether. It happens so often I sometimes don't even notice OT till someone else points it out. Or I think back to it later. It's just very normal to have that happen. Haven't seen in mentioned but cars women cannot afford to have an unreliable car. Or try to avoid it. God forbid you're stranded with a breakdown or run out of gas. I like a quarter to half full tank and proactively get it filled. My husband most often drives it as close to empty as possible makes me crazy. I know you asked about going out, but in addition to things already said, these things piss me off in the workplace. Being asked to be the note taker, set up, clean up, making or bringing coffee in business meetings. Others assuming childcare responsibilities, home duties are primarily mine. Being expected to monitor my tone and language when disagreeing so I don't offend men. Even if they are straight up wrong or being dicks. Being interrupted and then having a man speak over me or pass off my ideas as his own. When buying a car. I always feel that I am treated differently if I turn up as a lone woman compared to if I turn up with a man. In my younger days, I used to try to be all girl power and do it by myself but was sure I was getting fleeced. Then I started taking my dad along. Even when I do most of the talking and ask the questions to the salesman and make it clear the car is for me, they still sometimes direct their answers to him. It bugs me but I still feel that I get a better car at a better price by having a man with me. 
having to fear walking alone at night, or even day, I've had cars follow me. If you stand up for yourself, you're just a bitch on her period. Not being respected in general. I shouldn't have to tell adult men not to touch me at work. I'm 20 years old. You're 60. If I know better you certainly should. Constant comments on appearance. Why do you dye your hair red? You were way more attractive with darker hair. Well I hope you wouldn't be attracted to me either. Way. Uncle. Oh. You've put on weight. Good thing you're already engaged. Thanks grandpa. I'm dealing with chronic illness and if a man cannot cope with me gaining 10 pounds. Leave please. I'm genuinely exhausted of the majority of men in my life acting like any change I make about myself is to please their gaze. Not being able to accept a drink in public or leave your drink for a split second. Catcalling. I used to work as a CNA. I mentioned one day that my fiancé does a lot of the cooking. Cue the, you aren't cooking and taking care of your man? I understand they're from a different time. But at this point if you cannot cook a simple meal and expect your spouse to handle all the housework, this is just weaponized incompetence. If you get harassed or assaulted, well what were you wearing? That low-cut top was clearly asking for it. Barf. Male strangers get into my personal bubble when talking to me. Like we know each other. Yet I see men interact with enough distance to put a smart car in between. I've had to create a special stance just for this. I put one foot in front and lean on the back leg. Now I know some women have boundary issues too but I never see my husband have to back off from. Talking to male strangers. It's like the whole world knows, don't go near the men. Quote. We are taught to be nice. Nice is not always the best response. We need to be taught or learn later to be strong and that we are capable and we deserve as much as any man. From respect to pay to thanks for all we do. Edited. I have expressed a good idea. A way to repair something. A way to improve something and been ignored until a man repeats it. I once told husband we should wrap old water heater for energy savings. He said that it was foolish. They are made with insulation and wouldn't do it. Then a male friend mentioned doing the same thing and he said, we were thinking about doing that. 2. This was a long time ago but I sure remember it. It's the systemic objectification of women and that it's normalized that men. Not all. But a lot. Feel the right leer. Catcall or give unwanted attention to females that is the root of it all. As a 49-year-old female, my days of this are long past but it was simply something I and all my peers were expected to accept. Walking down the street is an exercise in men blatantly staring or trying to talk to you. If you brushed them off or ignore them, there was every chance they would get aggressive. Sadly, not much has changed. I was at a convenience store recently with my 21-year-old son at around 8 p.m. and there were two young girls dressed up for a night out buying some soft drinks. They looked great. I wouldn't consider them provocatively dressed. Not that that should matter anyway. Some mega creep followed them around the store. Bought his stuff first and then loitered beside them just leering. They were clearly feeling uncomfortable and whispering to each other and uncertain of what to do. He then said to one of them, you're really pretty. She kinda gave the half smile and tiny head bob that every woman in this situation is all too familiar with and then turned away from him to pay the cashier. His tone then completely changed at the brush off and he suddenly started saying very loudly and quite frankly scarily, you know you're really pretty, don't you? Single quote. She continued to ignore him and the alarm and panic in both her and her friend's eyes was real. He continued to harangue them as they walked out with things like, stuck up BTCH, and, you think, you're too good for me, don't you? And, it was a compliment. You see, T. Seriously I had PTSD of all the times this had happened to me in my youth. 
The problem also remains that no one around does anything, until this day. In my proudest mommy moment ever, my gentle giant of a son stepped forward between the man and the two girls and asked if everything was okay and if he could walk the girls somewhere. Only then did the guy back off. Men have no idea what it is we go through on a daily basis. Just going to work, getting lunch or going for a night out. Those that do suddenly notice can never unsee. Men don't have to walk down the street constantly surveilling their surrounds. Not being able to walk by themselves after dark or a million other things that they take for granted. The world is designed for men. Smartphones were way too big for a long time because they were designed by men for men. Car crash test dummies are designed off of the male body. And women are 17% more likely to die in car accidents. There are tons of medicines that were only ever tested on men still. A lot of safety equipment doesn't fit women well. Worrying that your period is going to start even though you just had your last one two weeks ago. Not having enough room in your purse for your phone, wallet, and tampons, pads. Not being able to wear something that shows skin or even remotely flattering to your body without being called sexy or assuming you want attention from men. Well, this is more of a niche experience. But I'm a female gamer, right? There's always going to be people rooting against me or trolling me because I'm a chick. I play competitively, which means in the community people know my tag. So the risk of being harassed is much higher since they know I'm a woman and go to the tournaments. The amount of times I've had to get authority figures involved to get someone out of the venue, away from me due to them making me uncomfortable is a lot. We can't call out misogynistic behavior because then we are just a prude, another man has to do it. Oftentimes when you are in a group of men and women, say at a barbecue or holiday, the men will often want to only talk to the men. I was in the military and knew everything that the men were talking about. But they didn't want to hear my opinion or experience about it. They only cared to hear about other men's experiences. I saw in a lot of get-togethers that the men would naturally go off into their own area to talk, sports and work and leave the women to watch the children and to cook. When we would have nights with friends to play cards, the men would rather be on teams with each other. There was just always a divide in the groups. I feel that younger men and women are much better able to mesh and that there is more general interest in each other than in older groups. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epicaracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.